Welcome students, we come to this lesson of concept of dimensional analysis. Now what do you mean by dimensional analysis is the fact that say for example I have some variables. Well, let us directly go to an example because that will be better for you to understand. Say what I have, it is told that a velocity of a stream is found to be directly proportional to the wavelength of water and directly proportional to the acceleration due to gravity. So I know that this is what? This is wavelength and I know that what is this? This is acceleration due to gravity. Well, these two quantities I know have a dimension of Wavelength is nothing but simply length and acceleration due to gravity is nothing but acceleration itself. So, it is LT minus 2. Now, in the process of dimensional analysis, what we need to know is how exactly these quantities are connected. But in that case, we cannot find if there is some dimensionless constant in a particular equation. Let us come to that. Say what I should do now is write V is equal to K lambda and I assign a power to lambda which I say is X. And similarly I write G and I assign a power to G as Y. Now what I do is write down the dimension of all these quantities where K is mind you a dimensionless constant. So I will not write the dimension of k while putting down the values. So, v will have a dimension of lt minus 1. Lambda will have a dimension of l which is to the power x. And g will have a dimension of lt minus 2 to the power y. So, now if I add these two powers, I have l having a power of total x plus y. And I have t having a power of minus 2y. Now what we do is compare the power of L and t in the right hand side and that of the left hand side. So as you can see the power of L on the left hand side is 1 and on the right hand side is x plus y. So I have an equation here 1 is equal to x plus y. And if I compare the power of time I see it is minus 1 here and minus 2y here. So, it is minus 1 is equal to minus 2y. So, what I have is y as half. So, you see if I have y half and if I substitute here half then x happens to be half again. So, I have solved x also which is half. So, all I do is now assign these powers to their values. So, now eventually what happens finally is I know v is equal to lambda to the power half and g to the power half. So I can go on to write this like this, a constant which I do not know what the value is, but I do know what is the power of lambda and g. Now this can be calculated by experiment in various equations you will find. Just we have learned an equation called this, v square is equal to u square plus 2as. So these two can be calculated otherwise, cannot be calculated from dimensional analysis. So, this is fundamentally dimensional analysis where you know that how a particular quantity is connected with some other quantity. Well, now say for example, you are given another relation, you are told that time period of a pendulum varies directly at length, varies directly as acceleration due to gravity. Now, when I am given this, I already know what to do. I can put it as k, I assign a power to L which is x. I assign a power to g which is y and then, then I go on to write t is equal to l to the power x and what is g? g is l t minus 2 to the power y. So eventually I have a power for l as x plus y and t as minus 2y. If you compare you can find that you have a power of 2y but you do not have a power of l. So that means I should equate x plus y to 0. So that implies that y is equal to minus of x. 
Now, if I just compare here the value of t, I find that y is equal to, I see, I can write it as 1 is equal to minus 2y. So, y is what? y is minus half mind you. And if y is minus half, then x is plus half. Why it is minus or minus half, that makes it plus half. So, if I go on to write the final value, I can put it like this, that t is equal to k l plus half and g minus half. So, eventually I can go on to write it as k root over l by g. Now, those who have studied pendulum do know that actual value for t is 2 pi root over l by g. So, here is a limitation of dimensional analysis that you cannot find a particular constant which is there in the equation in this method. This should be calculated either by experiment or by some other way. So, now we will give you one more limitation of dimensional analysis which implies that you cannot involve more than three variables here. Say, if your basic units are given, say, in terms of your basic units are given in terms of force F, length L, and time T, then what should be the dimension of mass? So, in that case, what I should do is I should put M, I should put F to the power X, I should put L to the power Y, I should put T to the power Z, and then go on to write is like this that M is equal to M L T minus 2 to the power x, l to the power y, and t to the power z. And then I go on to add all these things. So, m, there is only 1, m to the power x, l, you can see it is x plus y, and t, as you can see, it is minus 2x plus z. So, if I go on to solve, I can find the values of x, y, and z from here. How? Well, I can calculate it like this. I will draw a line here separately and calculate. You see, from comparison, I can have x equal to 1. The moment I have x equal to 1, I have x plus y equal to 0. So, I have x equal to minus y. So, that makes y is equal to minus 1. Here, I have minus 2x plus z equal to again 0. So, it is 2x equal to z. So, what I have for z is the value of so, as you can see, if I now replace the powers there in force, in length, in time, then I do have a value and the value that it appears to is same as I derive it from here. You see, fundamentally what you have for F, you know, we have it M L T minus 2. So, what should be M? M should be F L minus 1 T 2. If you compare the powers, then you will find that it is exactly the same x equal to 1, y equal to minus 1 and z equal to 2. So, if you know this kind of equation already and if you have to apply it on dimensional analysis, then you do it in this way. But be careful, don't do these things directly for your board exams because these are what we call shortcuts to do a problem very quickly. But in schools, I will tell you not to do it in this way. You do it in a laboratory, way. And that is why dimensional analysis stands for. Well, that is all for you students right now. Thank you. For testing your understanding of this lesson and more videos, log on to www.tubelessons.net.